Yes, Mr. Clayton, that's a brake noise, all right. Now suppose you drive the car for a while. I'll get out and stand on the curb. Then as you stop the car in front of me, I can tell whether the noise is coming from the front or rear brakes. All right, Bill. That's fine, Mr. Clayton. It sounds like a front brake to me. Now I'll take you to your office and get on back to the shop. I'll give you a ring when the car is ready. Well, I'm pretty sure the noise is coming from just one of the front brakes. Okay, Bill. I'll get right at it. One more thing, Larry. Since you're going on vacation next week, I've asked Joe to stick around and help. I want him to get an idea of how you tackle a brake noise job. Fine, Bill. I'll show Joe all the ropes so I can get away. And we'd better pull the wheels and drums off both front wheels to make sure we fix the one at fault. Uh, I've worked on enough brakes to know that a brake noise can be telegraphed either way. Larry's right, Joe. You can usually tell front or rear brake noise without too much trouble. But... Pinning it down to a left or right front wheel can sometimes throw you. I'll keep that in mind, Tech. And here's something else, Joe. When it comes to eliminating brake noise, I sure don't know all the answers. However, some of the things I've been doing have worked out pretty good. So I'll just go through my usual routine and try to tag all the important bases. That's good enough for me, Larry. Okay, but we'd better get moving on this job. Suppose you pull the wheels and drums, and we can take a look at the brake. There you are, Larry. And I've blown out all the dust and dirt, too. Ah, that's fine, Joe. Well, there's no sign of brake fluid or grease leaks. How about the drums? I've checked the drums, and they both look okay. Fine, Joe. Are there any signs of the drums rubbing on the support plate, Larry? No, Tech, there aren't any signs of scraping. That's good. Now, how about checking the drums for out of round? You always do that, Larry? I usually do, Joe. I don't know as it has much to do with noise, but it sure helps me to get a good shoe adjustment. Now, according to this drum gauge, these drums are round within 5,000, so they're okay. That means we're ready to check the shoe adjustment. What's so important about adjustment? Well, poor shoe adjustment causes partial contact with the brake drum. Now, partial contact usually makes the shoes vibrate. It's one of the main causes of brake noise. And listen, Joe. The way to check or set those shoes right is with a brake shoe gauge. Tech's got a good point, Joe. With the drum gauge set to the drum radius, you adjust the finger of the shoe gauge. The word drum on the finger should show up on top. Next, we'll mount the gauge on the spindle and turn the finger until the word heel shows on top. And here's what happens. Turning the finger to put the word heel on top gives you the proper 6,000 setting for checking the clearances at the heel and toe of the shoes on this model. And then I swing the finger across the heel and toe ends, checking the clearances to see that they're right. The adjustment on this brake is okay. Now we'll check the shoes on the right front wheel. Well, the adjustments on both these brakes are all right. What are you going to do now? Before Larry does anything else, he'd better tell you some more about what happens when you have poor adjustment. Yeah, Tech. Poor adjustment is behind a lot of cases of brake noise. Now, for instance, Joe... If you had a case where there was too much heel clearance, the initial shoe contact would be made at the toe. This would make the lining contact the drum from the center to the toe, leaving the heel end with no contact. I see, Larry. I suppose not enough clearance at the heel would leave the toe end with no contact. Sure, that's the ticket. And either hard heel or hard toe contact causes the shoe to vibrate and squeak. Here's another kind of partial contact. If the edges of the lining contact the drum first, that may also set up a vibration. And you can sometimes tell this condition by checking the wear pattern of the lining. Yet there are times when clues like wear patterns are wiped out by hard brake usage. In some cases, however, where the inside edge of a lining is worn more than the outside, it means that the shoe is tilting outward when pressure is first applied to the shoe. Why don't you bring Joe up to date on the cause of shoe tilt, Larry? Oh, sure thing, Peck. The adjusting cam pin, Joe, might be a little too long. A long pin would hold the shoe out and wouldn't let it contact the drum squarely or evenly. You see, when the brakes are applied, the shoe tries to straighten up. But the pressure of the shoe web against the cam pin isn't great enough to bend the support plate. 
Yet the shoe keeps trying to straighten up, and this sets up a vibration. I get it, Larry. But what if the pin is too short? Oh, that's not so critical. Here's why. If the pin is too short, the guide spring pushes the shoe inward toward the support plate. When the brakes are applied, the shoe straightens up because it can usually push the guide spring back. However, if the pin is extremely short or the guide spring is unusually strong, you may have to relieve the pressure by bending the guide spring away from the shoe. Actually, there should be from 25 to 35 pounds spring tension on the shoe. I see. I suppose the shoe that tilts inward would show wear on the outer edge of the lining. But there wouldn't be as much outer edge wear because the shoe rights itself quickly. There's another condition you can sometimes diagnose by looking at the lining wear pattern, Joe. What's that, Peck? A shoe that's slightly twisted or bent usually shows a diagonal wear pattern. But even this glue can be rubbed out during a lot of hard brake applications. That's right, Tech. And if a diagonal wear pattern is fairly evenly spread out, the shoe is twisted only slightly. But if the wear is heavily concentrated at opposite corners, it means the shoe is badly twisted. But you rarely see one like that. Well, on this job, then, we'll still have to check alignment and the linings, and we also want to see that the anchors and other attaching bolts are tight. Okay? Yeah, Joe. When we know what's behind our trouble, we can fix the brake shoes so they'll make an even, full area lining contact the minute the brakes are applied. Now, before you remove the shoes, check the fit on the anchors by prying with a screwdriver. There shouldn't be more than five thousandths movement. And be sure you mark the shoes so you'll get them back where they belong. Don't look now, fellas. But you're going to mark up the record if you don't turn it over. Now, I put a torque wrench on all the anchors and attaching bolts to see if they were tight enough, and they're okay. Looseness and poor adjustment aren't behind this brake noise. Fine, Larry. Now let's take the shoes off so we can look at the lining wear patterns and see if the shoes are lined up properly. All right, Tech. Ah, the inside edge is worn on this shoe from the left front brake. Inside edge, eh? Doesn't that mean this shoe has been tilting outward? That's right, Joe. And while you're at it, take a look at the push rods. For what, Tech? To see if they're bent, Joe. Once in a great while, that happens when a shoe is badly cut. These push rods look okay to me. Well, we'd better see if those shoes are straight, then. How do you do that? Why, I check them on a surface plate. Watch this. There, you see? Just swing the shoe across the surface plate. All these shoes are straight. Now I think I'll check those cam pins and see how long they are. Okay, Larry. Can you check those pins with that brake shoe checking gauge, Larry? Yeah, Joe. Here's how it works. You mount the gauge on the spindle and set the end of the finger against the flat surface of the wheel cylinder mounting lug. Tighten this wing screw that we have installed to hold the gauge in place. You see, the surface of the cam pin should be the same height as the surface of the mounting lug. Now, look at this. If the end of the finger will just clear the end of the pin when we swing the gauge around, the pin's all right. Uh-oh, that finger won't go over. This pin is too long, and that's what probably caused the shoe to tilt. What are you going to do now, Larry? Grind the pin down? Oh, no. All you need to do is lift the guide spring a little and give the pin a couple of good swipes with a file. Then recheck the height of the pin. That looks like a cinch to do. But uh, what happens if you take off too much? Well, too much rarely hurts, Joe. Unless, of course, you get it more than 20 thousandths below the surface of the mounting lug. So don't lean too hard on that file. You're right, Larry. But it's a good idea to get that pin length exactly on the button. As a matter of fact, you've got to be careful with every step on brake work. Well, the finger just clears the pin now, so the pin's okay. Fine, Joe. If the pin's ever shorter than 20 thousandths, say up to 30 thousandths shorter, you can bend the flat guide spring outward a little. That relieves pressure on the shoe. While we're at it, Joe, we'd better check the other cam pin and see if it's okay. 
finger just clears the pin. So it's the right length. Fine, fine. Any questions? Just one, Larry. How do you check the pins on rear wheels where there's only one wheel cylinder and no mounting lugs? No, simple, Joe. You set the end of the finger against the flat spacer under the anchor on the rear wheel brake support and see if the finger clears the pin. I get it. What's next? Now, I think you'd better grind the linings on that new grinder we got last week. Oh, yeah, that new grinder. But, uh, confidentially, I don't even know why linings are ground. Well, there's a couple of good reasons, my boy. Tell them the story, Larry. First of all, Joe, grinding gives a true flat surface and removes glaze spots from the linings. Glaze can sometimes cause brake noise. Second, that machine will grind the lining on an arc smaller than the arc of the drum. That means the ends of the lining are ground thinner than the middle. Uh, why do you grind them like that? Well, when they're ground that way, the linings will make a full contact with the drum. Here's why. When the wheel cylinder applies pressure against the toe end of the shoe, the shoe is crowded against its anchor. Therefore, with the center of the shoe contacting the drum and high pressures applied at both ends, the shoes and drum assume the same shape, giving even contact over the entire lining area. Now I think I see it. Fine, Joe. You'll find the whole story on grinding linings in this reference book. Okay, Larry. I'll give it a good once-over. Incidentally, Joe, when you're working with riveted linings, be sure you've got the proper chamfer on the ends of the lining. Yeah, Joe. That chamfer should extend to the middle of the first row of rivets on each end. The lining should be at least a sixteenth of an inch thick at the ends. And don't forget to put a little Mopar luber plate on the push rod ends, the anchor bolts, cams, cam pin ends, and spring attaching holes when you reinstall the brake shoes. Another thing, my boy. Remember to turn the anchors so the arrows will point away from the heels of the shoes they control. That's so the brakes won't lock if the anchors happen to work loose. Okay, Tech. The right front wheel checked out all right, so we won't have to worry about that. I'll try to finish up this job right now. <laughs> I see you've got the shears ready for final adjustment. Do you know how to use the adjusting gauge? I think so. But you better check me on it. Uh, let's see. You can bring the heel of the shoe up to the gauge by turning the anchor bolt so the point of the arrow turns toward the drum. And if the heel is too tight against the gauge, you can move the shoe away by turning the anchor so the point of the arrow turns away from the drum. Right. And after adjusting the heel ends of the shoes, Joe, you just tighten up the anchor bolt snug. Not tight, just snug. Uh-huh. I get it, Larry. Then I suppose you move the finger of the gauge across the toe of the shoe and check the clearance there. That I do, Joe. Then if I have to move the toe end up to the gauge, I pull down on the wrench to turn the cam toward the shoe. If I have to move the toe end... Away from the gauge, I push up on the wrench to turn the cam away from the shoe. Then you recheck the heel clearance to be sure it hasn't changed, eh, Larry? Oh, sure, sure. You have to recheck heel and toe a couple of times to get the right clearances. Finally, I hold the anchors while I tighten the nuts 55 to 75 foot-pounds. Then... Wait a minute, Larry. Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, yeah. After I tighten the anchors, I recheck the shoe adjustments to be sure they didn't change. I see, Larry. Do you suppose that the long cam pin was all that caused the noise on this job? Probably, Joe. But we always go through all these steps to be sure. And remember, what ails one brake might not be found in the next brake noise job you get. Take bonded linings, for example. That's right, Larry. Why don't you tell Joe what other things you do to correct the noise condition on a job with bonded linings? Okay, Jack, we'll do. Now, for one thing, Joe, if I come across cycle bond linings that don't have diagonal grooves, 
I always put them in. How do you do that? Well, you just make a mark on one end of the lining, seven-eighths of an inch from the side. Then you mark the other end, seven-eighths of an inch from the opposite side. Next, you draw a line connecting those two marks. With a hacksaw, you cut through the lining to the face of the shoe. Go over the cut with two blades in the frame to widen the groove. Then sandpaper the cut edges and blow out the dust. Okay, Larry. Anything else that's special? Yeah, the ends of cycle bond linings have got to be flush with the ends of the shoe. And the linings shouldn't be tampered. Another thing. On bonded lining jobs, you can install dampener springs on the outside of the drums. These springs dampen out vibrations. Okay, Larry. I'll keep it in mind. Does that wind up the differences between riveted and bonded linings? Yes, it does, Joe. Now let's finish up. Then we can road test the car thoroughly and make sure we did a good job. Frankly, fellas, I know you did a good job. And if you'll always check adjustment, tightness, and brake shoe alignment carefully, you'll never have much trouble getting rid of brake noise. <laughs>